Hello, it's Denise from Women Beyond a Certain Age. We're so excited to have a return guest today, our friend Colleen from Tuscan Women Cook. Now, I know Colleen from Trina Kay, and a lot of you that listen know Trina Kay. She's a publicist for cookbooks, TV, you, you name it. I, and Trina and I have known each other probably for 20 or 25 years. So I was thrilled to meet Colleen through Trina, and Colleen agreed to meet with us today, and we're recording some podcasts. Hello, Colleen. How are you? I'm well, Denise. It's so good to see you. Good to see you. Now, I have to tell you two things. I'll just say, Colleen, and then you tell us more about your tours, because I think that especially after COVID, people are fascinated about this whole situation. And Tuscany, if people have never been there, they need to go with Colleen to Tuscany. I love at the end of Colleen's email where people write things, clever things or quotes, you have all that is really worthy, all that is really worth the doing is what we do for others by Lewis Carroll. Now, Colleen, I got to tell you something that struck me yesterday, really like a thunderbolt, because I think so many of the problems we have right now come from people not thinking for the greater good. Do you know what I mean? They're just, I mean, we can't solve the world's problems today, but I love that you have that quote. And I'm sure when you take men, women, spouses, whoever you take on tours, you see the best of humanity. Do you know what I mean? Or a teamwork, hopefully. And I, I, once in a while, there's a lemon. But tell me about what it's like for you to be a tour leader and how you put this whole thing together anyway, how you did it. Oh, gosh. Um, well, the company's 22 years old. Um, and um, we're one of the original immersion uh, culinary experiences in Tuscany. So thank you, Stanley Tucci, for pointing out that the Nonas have the best teaching skills there are, because we've been doing that for 22 years. And um, it is going back to what you said about doing for others. Um, it's such a gratifying experience in so many ways. Um, I'm very, very lucky, blessed, and uh, work pretty hard to get here. Um, but uh, I was in shopping centers just to go back. And that was a very shopping centers, sales, leasing, um, brokerage, and very, for lack of a better word, very male driven, very testosterone driven. And you start to become that, <laughs> right? Yes. And when um, my kids started buying things on Amazon back in the day, I was like, what is this thing? I better pivot here pretty quickly. So I was able to sell my company at a, at, a, at a good time and get out of retail shopping centers and um, found very blessed to find this opportunity um, and take over Tuscan Women Cook. So um, it is, I, I, I can't express the doing for others um, is the consummate really Italian at Tuscany, especially um, way of life because their hospitality just runs in their blood. And yes. I've learned so much and our guests are on vacation. So the experience is just, it's really hard to describe. And we are immersed. We are immersed in this tiny village. And um, I, it's just, a, it's wonderful, wonderful. And we built this program up to be something I'm very, very, very proud of this and excited to take people. You mentioned two or three things and we're gonna talk. I, I, I think that we're so important. You know, Colleen, what, and going back to the quote, one, you're what, young women will send me texts, private texts, and they, they wanna know if I would help sponsor them to get into La Dame, let's say, or something like that. Now, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I, I, I'm not a member of most of those groups anymore, Colleen. I was active when I was in it, I loved it, but my career is different now because I, I'm not styling anymore. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so sure. I'm in semi-retirement. I'm coming out of my semi-retirement to be more active in other things and volunteer work and stuff. But when they text me, I always say, I'm not a member anymore, but the woman that's in charge still knows me, drop my name. Here's another woman that's a dear friend of mine that would be happy to write you a letter, you know, or if you still need something. And, and it's funny, they're all probably in their 30s. 
Mm-hmm. And when they write me back, they say, I can't believe you just did that. It was so nice of you. And I think to myself, and I always say to them, well, we're supposed to be nice to each other. <laughs> and it's uh, one of my friends mentioned yesterday that because we've all become so online creatures, and don't physically meet people anymore or touch them or, you know, go out to coffee with them and stuff. She thinks that's some of the reason that we're all so disconnected. Mm-hmm. You know, I just think that. So when you say, I'm sure you feel like you get more than you give, even though you work very, very hard on your tours. Well, work is relative term. <laughs> don't tell my husband. No, I understand. No, I get that. Yeah. There were jobs calling, not a lot. More than enough that Cindy and I would say to each other when we get in the car, we would have done that job for free. Do you know what I mean? Because it was that much fun or that interesting or we learned something. And when you love what you do, right? When you love what you do, it shows. It's just exactly what it is. So that I did not know you'd been in business 22 years. Congratulations. That's huge. And so what happened when COVID hit? Because you have, so you've already reinvented yourself and, you know, Tuscan Women Cooks is successful and you're taking it, you're, you're doing it. What happened when COVID hit? What happened, Denise, when COVID hit, which is interesting because I don't think COVID really hit. It was a slow unknown and maybe like you i'm super i don't like unknowns i like to control things and i like things to go well and i you know want want uh, things to be the way they should be um so covid slowly insidiously crept its way in and started i would say we got back in 2019 right so we ended fall and looking back on that, you know, my daughter in November had this, she didn't, doesn't really get sick. And she had this weird thing that was November of 2019. And then certain things here and there, I, I kind of think maybe back in Italy, you know, did some, then you look back and say, oh my gosh, I wonder if that's what it was. So yes. it, right. It just rolled on in. And what happened was, you know, it was a really tough time for me because I didn't have answers for people. Yes. Right? I, I want to have answers for people. That's why I love doing this. I can find new wineries. I can find new restaurants. I can find new food to make. And I know things. Um, I didn't know anything. I didn't know what to say. Nobody knew anything. And it was the whole wide world, yeah. not a, a specific territory or geographic area. It was the whole world. So, um, I am to say, I'm, I've gone through some things. I've had breast cancer. I, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that was really hard. It was for me, you know, and I know I'm not alone. It was everybody. So fortunately for us, we were able to ride it out and most people, um, uh, rescheduled. So we've been rolling through and, and we're on track now, which is fantastic. And we also, it allowed us to, get creative. So we created a marketplace on our website. So if we couldn't bring Montefalonico, which is our little village to our guests, our guests to Montefalonico, we would bring it to them. So we set up a marketplace with our, our cheese purveyors, our ceramicists, the winemakers, the olive oil purveyors. So we were able to do something. We actually wrote the cookbook during that time because, you know, we never had time, never had time, never had time. And Trina, which is why we know Trina K is because of the cookbook. She's pushing, you got to do this cooking. And we never had time. So lo and behold, you are forced to do some things you didn't have time to do. And thank goodness it came out great. The cookbook's fantastic. The marketplace was wonderful. So some silver linings, you know, but definitely a challenging time. Um, for us. And, and I'm, I'm glad to report that we have been traveling back since the autumn of 2021. Uh, now we have to say it's Colleen, people can reach you. And we put all this information up when we, when Cindy broadcasts it, the thing, but your website is TuscanWomenCook.com. Is that correct? Correct. Tuscan okay. Women Cook, because it's the women who teach our classes. Got it. Now, I am so sorry. I haven't gotten to your website. I read everything else and I know your cookbook. So we'll talk about that. But that you put up in marketplace is brilliant. I mean, yeah. see, this is why one of the things, and I always say this, 
I repeat myself. See, I think women are just resilient. Do you know what I mean? I think we're born naturally resilient. Um, obviously not everyone. And there are men that are probably equally as resilient. I've just never met them. That's all. <laughs> I know great men, but I think that women are just resilient because, and it's, it's, I'm not, you know, it's exactly like dropping in that sentence that you, you know, you are a survivor of breast cancer and something else. And then they close, the whole globe gets closed in your business and you find another way to do business. Do you know what I mean? This is huge. This is huge. Yeah. It's well, true. I, Women are so resilient. And I will share with you, talk about resiliency. When, in our little village of Monte Filonico, um, they, the, it's an elderly population that live yeah. there, right? So we're, we're one of one, we're very protective of them, but these women and men, they take their passeggiata every day at four o'clock, which is walk an afternoon walk and 80, 90, hundred years old. The other last season, I was with some people in our bus and I saw uh, one of our, not one of our owners, but one of the ladies of the village, 88 years old, carrying a two by four on her shoulders. <laughs> So I, I stopped our Flavio, the bus. I'm like, Flavio, Flavio, stop, stop. Let me see if she needs some help. Oh, yeah. no, honey. No, 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 no. No, I mean, it's a piace. No, no, no. <laughs> she, so that's resiliency. Yes. You know? <laughs> and I, amazing, I amazing women. I think it's incredible. I also think, and this is part of now because I was come from Italians, you know, part of being in an Italian family was, and I, of course, it depends on your parents, but and I'm old, so it was a very, it was a different, I think, different way to um, ra raising children. And I know the world has changed a lot, and I'm not saying that it was the right way. But my parents were the type, which is why I believe my sisters and I are such resilient creatures. But, you know, if we've been carrying that two by four and complained, my father would have said, come closer. I'll give you something to complain about. <laughs> yeah. if you just weren't the type. I mean, we were spoiled in many ways. They loved us to death. But we were really taught. Do you know what I mean? And I was sure. just talking to another woman about this who is Italian, who's a dear friend. She has three teenage boys. And she said, oh, I got to find someone to cut my lawn. I said, you have three teenage boys. What are you talking about? <laughs> One of these boys needs to cut the lawn. And if you have to give him 10 bucks, that's fine too. I'm not saying he shouldn't get paid. But she said, oh, Denise, you don't know how hard it is to get teenagers to do anything. And I thought, well, yeah, I do because I was a teenager and I didn't want to do things. And my father said, you're going to do it because you live in my house. Exactly. And, I, and exactly. I'm feeding you. So I think it's fascinating. But I do think that I can see that woman at 88 flagging you off saying, no, 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 we're fine. <laughs> I, I'll do, I'll get it up the hill. She wouldn't have taken the job if she didn't think she could accomplish it. Right. Solo mio, solo mio, only me, only me. God, that's amazing. Yeah. Now, when, so the cookbook, I've seen the cookbook. It's beautiful. I think, Colleen, we gave the cookbook away in one of our cookbook drawings uh, a few months ago, and it was oh. sought after. Now, tell me what, so you had time now all of a sudden. Trina was smart to tell you to. And can people buy the cookbook off your website? Sure, sure. Tescawomencook.com and the, there's a link to the to buy the book. Fine. Now, what did you learn by producing a cookbook? Because a lot of the people that listen to us are cookbook authors. So oh. I knew they would be interested in hearing what you have to say and not, you know, publishing it yourself. I mean, doing yeah. everything by yourself. Well, I had a lot of good help. Trina is incredible. Good. Say no more. And I have um, Philip on our, our, he's our, basically he's our webmaster, but so much more. And he's, he's an editor, prior editor of cookbooks as well. So I have a lot of good help around me. Good. I don't proclaim any. So you built a good team, which yeah. is a tip in itself, because I think, I mean, I know this calling from new authors that send me emails or send me private messages. They sign a contract and they they have no idea how many p moving parts there are to a cookbook. And you just mentioned several, you know, there's yeah. marketing, you have to gather up all the recipes, there's artwork, there's editing. So yeah. Denise, the, what, the biggest thing was, so it was during COVID, so COVID, we could, it was great to be communicating with the Nona and say, can we have this recipe? Can we do this one? Cause it's all their recipes. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So the, 
most challenging part was in the um, in ed in editing and tasting testing the um, recipes because they don't measure anything. So we had to. Um, what do, you, what do you call when they, the food testers, the professional food testers? Like, recipe tester. Are you kidding? Why? What? How do we do this? You know, so it was really funny. But the great part was we got to stay connected to the Nane while we were here and and the village was involved. So that part, and all the proceeds go to the people in the village. So um, it was a, a way to stay connected. So when we went back, it wasn't like this huge yeah. You know, schism of time, but it was a very fun process of um, just testing the recipes. Hilarious, actually. I think I know Trina sent some of the recipes to friends of mine that are recipe te testers, and all of them total pros. I, you know what? I know this from my grandmother's recipes that were not written down, and after she passed away. I was so sorry. I'd made raviolis with her a couple of times, but Colleen, I was young and I wasn't into it then. Do you know what I mean? I wasn't, it, it, I didn't realize what I should have realized. Yeah. So since then I've made raviolis only a few times because let's be honest, it's a tremendous amount of work if you're not in the kind of the trough of making them all the time. And when I made them, and it took hours, but they were good. But both my sisters looked up from their plates and said, hmm, not as good as Josephina's. And I, thought, I think I'm going to be hearing that the rest of my life. Do you know I mean? So I've tried you know, it's kind of one of our goals, Denise. Actually, I try to keep this in the mission statement is to make making pasta, I always say, on a Tuesday night. Yes. Without intimidation. Just do it. It's, it. it's really not that hard. We start off in our classes where we the first two to three classes, we're doing it with the well and the egg and we're doing it like that. We're doing it by hand, kind of graduate into the Atlas, which is the thing that straps onto your counter and does yes. that. And then, but the last, the last day we give them, we don't show it, but we tell them how I do it at home on a Tuesday in my Cuisinart takes 20 minutes and it's a superior product. And we just take that away from it. And there's some really good um, fresh pastas out there to buy too. So yes. you just make the sauce, you know, there's some great stuff out there. Now that sounds exactly, you mentioned Atlas is the pasta machine. Um, I've had, I have mine and I have my mother's because my wow. mother made um, fresh pasta. And if people don't know about them, they should find out about them. And they used to be, see, when I grew up Colleen in San Francisco, there was a it was Chinese and Italians. That's who was in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And North Beach, my grandfather's apartment house was over the hill from North Beach. So in those days, there were Italian delis on every corner. Molinari's famous, yeah. famous um, families, the Biagolini's that had um, an equipment shop. Do you know what I mean? So it was mm -hmm. really easy to be immersed without going anywhere in um, Italian cuisine. So you, with your website, which I'm now I can't wait to go to it. You have helped people with that. Um, and the, you mentioned your Cuisinart. Do you have the pasta attachment or do you just make your dough in the plain Cuisinart and then roll it out? Yeah. Just put it in the, um, just the food processor. Mine happens to be a Cuisinart. Okay. And um, I don't have that attachment. I think I actually do on my KitchenAid, but I've never used it. Yeah. I love the Atlas. I got one as a wedding gift 30 years ago. I've been married 30 years. Thank you. And I pulled it out and it's the same machine. I mean, yes. and I'm, I'm an anti Amazon person. So go buy it from small business, but yes. um, they, it hasn't changed at all. And our Nona in um, at Belagajo where we cook and she's one of our favorites. We make this fantastic pasta al forno, which is lasagna, which means pasta in the oven. She uses that hers, you know, the, the crank is some kind of handmade thing. The clamp, the clamp is some kind of janky thing, but it's the same one that they're selling today in 2022. Isn't that, I know it's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. It's a great machine. It's a great machine. If, if you don't know about them, you guys go, you know, you can look them up. How did you find the town? How did you find that particular town? Well, the original owner, so how he was, uh, terminally ill is actually, so he had to sell the company. This was maybe 10 years ago, eight, 10, nine years ago. And there was kind of an RFP, which is basically 
he goes out to say, if you're interested, it's as a request for proposal. So it was kind of an audition in a way, you know, because he had he his help. wife moved to this tiny town. You don't know it. There's it's too small for tour buses to come through. Right. So we're granted that freedom. And it's just it's beautiful. And now our lodging, I've been working for the last four and a half years. To, our lodging is inside the village walls. So I'm thrilled beyond, beyond the beyonds on that. And um so they they bought a house there. They'd sold everything from Dallas. This there's backstory. And then he got sick, and then then along comes Colleen. And um, so it's really a, a special, a special village. I, I just don't really have quite the words to describe it. Once you come to us, the 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 pace that we, I mean, we do a lot, but you see that we have this little corner. <laughs> it's called bar sport, which is just the name doesn't, it's not what it sounds like. It's not really a bar. It's not really sports bar. It's a <laughs> gravel corner in our village where everybody goes. The grandmothers, the grandfathers, the children, the dogs, the goat, there's a goat that comes by. I mean, it is so, of course so there special is. and it's hard to say. So we go there, we're actually doing an Aperol spritz making class there um, now. So it's a super fun How fun it's to go, but it's just plastic tables and chairs, but everybody's there, you know. So it's the social hour. It's yeah. so wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I went to Sicily for the very first time last May. A friend rented a villa um gorgeous mm -hmm. having been to tuscany and chianti and umbria in italy proper i didn't know and everybody had raved about sicily i don't know that i loved it as much as i loved the re the rest of italy it was a little different but it was still fabulous but well, the, they kind of they say like sicilians don't consider themselves italian they do like, not they're, they're sicilian they're not italian and then vice versa so and i was just gonna say we did get to go to one or two really uh midi medieval villages like what you're talking about where tour bus won't even fit mm -hmm. and um and trying to keep that culture alive and trying to keep that culture protected. It's pretty fabulous. Yeah, and I had some of my best. I love the food in Sicily. I, I it was good. It was good. I liked it. Um, I think I, my problem is probably that I like pasta more than I like seafood. But I ate, you know what I mean? I ate a lot of seafood and it was fresh and it was lovely. Um, I, to be honest, and some of the best food I ate on this last trip, and I I've been to Rome five, six times, mm -hmm. was in Rome. I mean, and they were just corner spots, nothing fancy. These were mom and pop uh, restaurants that are still in business in Rome. And the food was magnificent. I mean, really magnificent. Yeah. With jug wine, with house yeah. wine, nothing yeah. fancy. <laughs> nothing fancy. That's the best. So you were able to all of a sudden in 2021 say we're going back to Italy. And you took a tour last fall? We did. We had, um, you know, it's it's kind of interesting. So I felt like if they want to go and the town wants us to come, we're going. So we had really great conversations. It was a very small group, um, very candid conversations, like I said, with the people in the village. How are you feel? No, please, please, please come. Because, you know, we're a big part of, you know, especially the Nona, you know, they don't work in restaurants anymore. They don't work, in, you know, outside of the home. So this is an opportunity for them to have some, some money and they could save it or pay for a phone for their grandchild or something, you know? So, so we went and um, looking back on it, everyone was really, really careful, you know? So I think we ended up just having, it was so great. It was just a really special time. And I knew that this, these groups would be really interesting, special people because they didn't care anymore. Gotcha. <laughs> They just wanted to travel. So we did. And it was a it was a great season. And, and we were just there in spring. And everyone is, well, that was glorious. It was just spectacular. Okay. And you know, people are ready to be traveling again. So here we now, are. And now that the, the you know, I think a big part of it too, which is helpful for me, is you don't have to test anymore at, as of today. Oh, okay. <laughs> you don't have to test uh, to get on a plane. Okay. Um, so they're making assumptions. I, I don't know what they're thinking, but the CD, the CDCs are pretty linked up now. We are in close communication on both ends of this 
earth with um, the CDCs and the ministerials and what is required. So we're on top of that. And we take care of all of that for our guests and make sure oh, lovely. they know what to do. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, going in May, it was pretty painless. And I, of course, everyone in my group, there were eight of us, we had been vaccinated, we'd been boosted. And then coming out of Italy, um, we had to be tested, you know, before we left and got back on the plane. Yeah. And, but, you know, everywhere I was, the airplanes, I was on Swiss air and people wore masks and they were, you know, it was, it was all very civilized. I certainly didn't feel it. I didn't feel in jeopardy at all. And I wasn't nervous about going. I know some people are, but now as some months have passed, I know so many people, so many of my friends that have gotten COVID now in their homes, do you know what I mean? In their home yeah. cabin, going to the market. They aren't, thank God, desperately ill. They're all vaccinated and boosted people. But I think it's just, I think it's something that's a way of life kind of in the moment. You know, if you're, if you're, I've had friends say to me, well, I'm never going to travel again. Oh. And I think to myself, well, that's your decision. I don't feel like that. Do you know what I mean? I, when people said, aren't you afraid in May? I said, no, I'm more afraid of, you know, not going than I'm afraid of going. <laughs> so I, I'm more afraid of, you know, dying on my couch and never traveling again than I am of getting, you know, getting something. I mean, life is, it's risky. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. It is, it is, but you could, you know, you could outside your house, something could happen to you. So that's exactly, you know, I can, uh, Colleen, I'm 71. I could slip on a rock in my garden. That's, you know, what I mean? the other day and I did slip, but I didn't hurt myself. And I said to my husband, I wonder when I'm gardening, if I should be wear my bicycle helmet, Do you know what I mean? Because my balance isn't what it used to be. I'm going to be one of those. It's like when you see children that have to wear helmets, I thought, mm, we start out like that. And I'm gonna <laughs> helmet so I don't hurt myself. No, I think it's perfect. Colleen, tell us, just, I know what people now can go to your website and talk about great products, but what if people have never cooked Italian food, okay, besides your cookbook, what do you think would be the way to approach it? I mean, people always ask me, oh, do you cook Italian food? Well, I cook my family food, which of course is, but also a lot of Italian food is perfectly roasted leg of lamb. Do you know what I mean with rosemary? Or, um, I mean, my father, my grandfather cooked. My mother was an excellent cook. My grandmother was an excellent cook. But, and we ate pastas and stuff. But I mean, well, I always say to people, to me, Italian food is very much like when California cuisine came out and everybody talked about, or when people talk about farm to table, to me, that's Italian cuisine because we just use the best ingredients and the freshest stuff we can find. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, you know, you're spot on, Denise. Um, our program, we, they, they are the original farm to table. You know, yeah. we're the chickens that we're eating, the eggs that we're eating, the rabbit there, or the pork. I mean, this is all real farm to table stuff. And and, I, and answering your question, I think, think about Italian food, it's actually one of the easier foods to make, I think, yes. because it's so simple. And like you said, Denise, as long as you're, getting the best ingredients you have and that you can have at your, that you can afford or that you can get, it will taste delicious and it, it's going to be easy and it's going to be great. Our recipes in our cookbook, these are recipes handed down for generations, not losing a thing because you would never deviate from your grandmother's recipe. Yeah. And like our Nona in our classes, we say, well, why did you put the egg? Like we make the stracciatella soup and I ask, you know, why did you put the egg and Parmesan in at the same time, why don't you do it in layers? No, no, Colleen, no, this is not how she does it. So <laughs> there's yeah. no reason behind it. It's just because that's how her grandmother did it. That's how she's going to do it. Even down to the stance of when you're making your pasta and you're rolling pasta, Donatella does it this way because that's what her grandma does. And the other one does her feet, you know, they, the placement of your feet, the rolling of the rolling pin, you know, so it's just the history of the recipe goes deep, deep, deep. And our cookbook recipes are, are good, but obviously we tested them many, many times, yeah. but they're easy to make and uh, indicative of the real Tuscan lifestyle that, we, that we're that we bringing to people. How fabulous. Yeah. Colleen, I thank you so much. Do you make, so 
you said one thing I should ask you some more. So you make pasta on Tuesday night with your food processor. So that's very inspiring to me that I should just see. I know when I start to do a coin, I then I get into it. Do you know what I mean? I but I buy it and I do make my own sauce. I always make my own sauces, but sometimes I just cheat out and buy um, pasta because I'm too lazy to pull out the flour and do everything. Though I even have incredible, I brought home Italian flour last time I was there because I uh, because I like to make gnocchi. So that that so I have Italian flour and that's so easy to me because it takes no time whatsoever. Do you know what I mean? Well, some people some people are intimidated by gnocchi, so yes, it just are. depends on who you are, right? So yes. you can do gnocchi, and that's easy for you. It's so easy for me. And the other night, and when you were talking about simple ingredients, because that's what my husband, every once in a while, I do this. I mean, we have it like once a month, but the last week, I just had really delicious mozzarella, fresh buffalo, and... Um, and the tom- and made a tomato, sliced tomato and cheese, you know, mozzarella uh, salad. And I put a little bit of balsamic glaze on it nice. and some red onions. And he kept saying to me, this is the most delicious salad you've ever made. And I thought we've been married 30 years. I said, Kenny, I think it's because I'd gone to the farmer's market and they really had beautiful tomatoes. I said, you know, if the tomato is right with the cheese and a little bit of balsamic, it doesn't get any better than this. Do you know what I mean? And salt and pepper. I mean, this is what it is. I also use expensive balsamic vinegar. That was a syrup that I'd bought at Trader Joe's. But when I go to Italy, I buy, and I know people gasp, but I buy really expensive balsamic vinegar, but it's only for things like that. It's just a finishing vinegar. Do you know what I mean? I'm not making salad dressings with it. And, um, you know, so the bottle last 10 years, you know, for new people. When, and yeah. someone said to me one night, it was a friend of ours, dear friend, but he said to me, he's a doctor. And he always says to me, why does the food taste so much better at your house than at our house? Well, there are two reasons. And I love them both very much. His wife doesn't cook. And secondly, I buy some of the world's most, you know what I mean? I'm buying, I'm buying the $22 a pound, you know, filet mignon. And I'm buying the $180 bottle of balsamic and stuff. But again, I'm using it so sparingly, do you know what I mean? That it's, it doesn't blow out your budget or anything. And I'll say to him, well, that's because it's this much for this bottle of balsamic. And he always says, oh, my God. You know, and I always say to him, you have more money than God. What do you care about You're buying a good bottle of balsamic? But then since then, he has started to buy or he'll say, this is the best cheese. I'll say, honey, this is not the rubbery stuff that you buy that's manufactured. Right. You know, somebody made this. Someone actually made this. The, yeah. I think the best time, Colleen, and I would love, and just one more thing about hospitality. I agree. And it sounds to me like your tours really emphasize the way of life in Italy. Do you know what I mean? That there is, and this is the difference again, when we were in the villa, um, wonderful. We had a cook and a, the woman who was the estate manager. So she took care of things. She made desserts actually that were out of this world. And, but sometimes, um, the man who who had splurged for the villa, who's a dear friend, would say things like, I asked her for that, but I don't think we're getting it today. I think we're getting it tomorrow. <laughs> and I would say to her, that's right. <laughs> I'd say, don't worry about it. She's got it on her list. She has every intention of fulfilling your wishes, but maybe not today because, you know, she's on her time. Well, the, also that, and they might not have that specific ingredient that she wanted. Right. And, and it's, you know, but no one, I will say this, and this is in hospitality. I've never been anywhere. And I've been in a lot of different villas. Well, in Mexico, they were like this too. I've never had someone try so hard to please, please us. Do you know what I mean? There was enormous um, sense of that they wanted to please us. And, and that's pretty extraordinary. It's so true. We, um, they want to give you, so we go to restaurants also and the, and the cooks are known, they want to give you the best lesson you can have. And the restaurants want you to have the best experience you can have, because this is, they're, they're giving to you. This is their love language. This is 
this goes back generations is how they're raised, you know? So it is so important in the guests, you know, speaking of your Italian heritage, we have had many guests that have had Italian heritage and said exactly what you said about, I was young, I was my grandma, I wasn't really into it and really burst into tears because the smells, the smell memories, the language memory, you know, really brings and evokes something in them very deep and, and emotional. And so we, we really, I'm getting the chills thinking about this, yeah. but um, yeah, there's just something that in, in, in this experience. And I, again, I'm, I'm just blessed to be able to, to, to share it with everyone. And it's, it's, you know, um, the people there are just so incredible, but you're right. And that is the, the ingredients it starts with the people. I mean, it starts with them knowing what is good <laughs> and not buying something and trying to skimp. If you don't have the right three things like your mozzarella, your, 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 you know, the tomatoes, then they're not going to do it today. We'll That's do right. it another day. That's very, you know, what else I think is interesting when you say this, like, I have friends that hate to entertain. Okay. They hate it. And then they tell me how awful it was, you know, or they didn't like it or something. And I would say to them, stop doing it. Yeah. Go to a restaurant, but call, you can call the restaurant beforehand, to get a room, you know, a corner in the back, pre-order for your guests if you want, get great wine. Do you know what I mean? Or yep. know what your guests want. But I think that if you don't like to cook, why bother? Do you see what I mean? I mean, I have a sister, one sister, she's wonderful. She never really, she doesn't like to cook. So, but both her daughter, you know, and her daughters love to cook. So if you don't want to cook, don't cook. You know, we have a lot of guests that don't cook. Oh, I'm it's sure. Interesting. We have a lot. Of, it's not just the men. I mean, sometimes we have, we're, we, they're, they're just the eaters. We have eaters yeah. that come. So, <laughs> No, I found that too. And I love that. Excuse me. I actually love that when I've been with my friends that we go together on these vacations, one or two of them don't cook. But they do the dishes, but they put out the wine and cheese before dinner. They set the table. So it's a, sure. there's a great sense of camaraderie, whether you're the cook or not. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so we all bring something to the table. That's exactly. You know? Well, Miss Colleen, is there anything I haven't asked you that I should ask you? Because we kind of rolled in. Oh, tell me this. Give me three things that you think you have to have if you want to make even just an Intel, an Italian influenced meal in your pantry. What do you think are three important ingredients? Well, one of the one, a can of San Marzano tomatoes and, and some garlic. Perfect. Then you're done. <laughs> so, Perfect. you know, that is the easiest weeknight. You just, you know, some garlic and some, and please don't buy canned gar or jarred garlic. That's just not the same thing. And don't buy it already crushed, you know, take 10 seconds to just do real garlic. And that's it. I mean, and, and maybe the third thing might be a nice bottle of red wine, I suppose. I couldn't agree. <laughs> and you know, when you say that, I come from my original as a chef, Colleen, I ran big events. Okay. My kitchen did big events, 500, 1,000, 2,000 oh, people. Parties. And so immediately when I got, when I moved up, got the the first thing I changed was this chef that had been in charge used, it was very Cisco, very, you know, mm -hmm. used, would order these huge jars of chopped garlic. And I would say to the boys, we're not going to use that anymore. And I would make them chop the garlic. Do you know what I mean? And the day before we'd put it in our own olive oil with a little salt and pepper, and then we would cook with it the next day. And at first the prep boys were a little concerned. It was like, why are we doing this work when we should just be buying that stuff that we used to buy? But do you know, Colleen, to this day, if I go to an event or someone's house, I can taste jarred garlic. I don't yeah. care how they try to hide it. Right. And I guess I would like to say too, if, if, you, if you're not going to cook because you don't want to chop garlic, okay, use that. But, you know, it just takes... 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Also, what if you just smash it with your knife and mm -hmm. put that in your oil? Do you know what I mean? Exactly. I'm and do a bunch at a time. So you like you just make it there. We have a, we do a, in one of our classes, we have this alione, which is a type of garlic in Italy, in our region. It actually has its own oh. denomination. You can't buy it. I'm trying to grow it right now. Oh my God. It's called that? alione and it's this sauce and you can only get the garlic there, but we can make it with our, and it's in our cookbook, but the amount of garlic we use in this sauce, you'd think would, you know, send the village to the hospital yeah. just from the smell of it all. 
but it doesn't. So we c- chop up that garlic in advance, put some oil on it and some salt and just keep it yeah. and use it over the week. Well, I think I know this from traveling. When I went to China for a month in the eighties, I decided Colleen and I was cooking. We went to the market and we cooked and oh, all the yeah. Chinese people that I was serving thought it was Italian food and all the, all the other Italians that I was with thought it was Chinese food. We all just, it was really just a <laughs> bunch of stuff that I threw in a walk. But after that trip, I learned that I would never ever travel without a brick of Parmesan cheese if I could get it through customs. Because yep. no matter what happens, if you put good, freshly grated Parmesan cheese on anything, it tastes good. That's so true. You know what? This season, I've been wanting to do this for years and I hadn't done it. I brought home a wheel of pecorino for the Cacio e Pepe. It was uh, 17 pounds and I took stuff out just so that I could bring the cheese back. And that was, was that cheese legal because it was dried? I mean, I mean, it's an A. You know what? My friend um, sealed it. So the wheel, we bring home cheese all the time because it's vacuum sealed. Got it. That makes wedges. Sense. But I, he actually, we go to the Kaguzi Farms um, and uh, Fabio, he, he sealed it for me so that I could, was legal. And um, we've been, so now it's like the sisterhood of the traveling cheese wheel. Yes. So, and because it's so, you can't make enough pasta, cacio e pepe. So it's, I've had people over, we're going, it's send it out around the, my, <laughs> it's like oh, the Southern California. Oh, fabulous. I'm coming to your house. You yeah. should really. <laughs> um, thank you right. so much for today. You just, it was wonderful. I said to Cindy, when uh, you were available today, I said, this is just one of those, we've had some, we've, we have wonderful guests all the time. Some of them, it, it gets heavy. Do you know what I mean? It's heavy because they've had an illness or something has happened in their lives. So I said to Cindy, all this is today is Italian food and talking about Italy. I said, this is just like one of those fun podcasts when it's just about um, enjoying your life, which is what I think that it radiates from you. I can see. And, and traveling again, right? Traveling. We have some positivity going here. And interesting, last time I, I talked with you guys, I was a woman of a certain age. <laughs> and now I'm a woman beyond a certain age. I'm, this is my birthday week. So I'm, turn, I'm turning 60. Um, oh, you're a baby. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, I think for me, 60s are, the fa- are fabulous. Yeah, it's oh, been great. I love it. And stuff that you used to worry about just falls to the wayside. I'm not kidding you. It's just like things that you think, oh, I have to do that now. And it really shows up in every day of my life. I think, oh, I was going to do that. I forgot. Oh, well, and you just move on or friends come for dinner and you burn up the rolls and you think, oh, well, and you just cut those rolls in half and (laughs) serve the tops and you don't and you throw the bottoms in the oven and you don't think about it again. Do you know what I mean? Well, you're an, you're a consummate entertainer. You must love to entertain as do I, but those are the kinds of things we get through where other, somebody else that might put them into a, yes. A into a, a yeah. And also if in, as we used to say on the yachts, well, like if people, if things weren't going well, people would get seasick on. So here people have spent like $50,000 for this yacht and their friends are getting seasick. I mean, sometimes it was just, and we learned to carry seasick patches. <laughs> But whenever that was happening, you would say to the bartenders, pour heavy, because if you gave them enough booze, they'd sleep all the way to Catalina. And it, was, it worked. You got to do what you got to do, that resiliency. Exactly. Thank you so much for your time today. We took a lot of your time. We like rolled two podcasts into one, but it's just absolutely wonderful to talk to you. And I'm thrilled for you. And I'm thrilled that your business is thriving and that you're back to work. Yeah, it's fantastic. Thank you so much. It's great to see you again. If people want to reach us, of course, they can reach us at womenbeyond at icloud.com. People reach out to us. We will have all Colleen's information is going to be up on the Women Beyond a Certain Age website. So please, um, and go to our website, Tuscan women cook because i'm going to as soon as we get off the phone because i want to see your marketplace now i of course i know about the cookbook but the marketplace sounds fabulous thank you it's fabulous and you know even our website is just fun to look at because it really transports you to our village and where we are 
That's, yeah. I was just going to say, of course, now, since we've talked about this, I was going to have my little tuna for lunch, but I think I'm going to make some pasta and put grated Parmesan. <laughs> brava, one brava. My, and a little butter. It's one of my, in olive oil, but it's one of my favorite dishes. I just make spaghetti with, you know, with Parmesan on it, and it's divine. Thank you. I hope to see you again and not so far away. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Hopefully I'll see you in Italy. Yes, I would love that. Goodbye, Miss Cindy. Thank you for everything.